Hey folks, today I want to talk about getting started with music licensing and I think one of the best places for you to get started, especially if you're wanting to get started in stock music licensing, is right here at Pond5. Get started with Pond5 and you might say, Pond5, isn't that kind of an old tech? Isn't that kind of a, everybody talks about it, but is that really the best place for making music income? In this video, I'll be talking about why I think Pond5 is the best place to not only start your music career in stock music or in music licensing, but why you need to start here with each song as you put them up to multiple libraries or wherever you put them. I'll talk about a little known feature that will save you time when you're uploading multiple versions of the same file. I also went to Pond5 directly to ask them some questions like, how do we get our music heard and found in a sea of a million songs? And the one I get asked the most often, is Pond5 run by robots? How in the world can they respond to questions and curate so many files that they get every day? Are they even human? And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you a few secret ways that not many people know about to make even more income possible with Pond5. Is it a secret? Should I tell them this secret? Echo, echo, echo. Now starting at small forward for the Orlando Magic, Eric Copeland, Copeland. So let's find out why you should start with Pond5 to make music income. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this continuing journey as we work through all the ways to make music income. And today I want to talk about Pond5. But first, did you know I have a new course and ebook coming that talks about all the libraries, like I'm talking about Pond5 right now. These are libraries I am in and know pretty well. These are libraries that I haven't gotten in yet, but can tell you how to get into them and where to go to get into them. I'm in about 20 libraries as we speak in stock music, and I will direct you to 20 more libraries that I didn't get in, but maybe you will. It's almost ready. And in the spirit of today's Pond5 video, I want to offer you a free download course that I have been working on. It's going to be part of a larger course eventually, but this particular course is just about how to upload to Pond5, um, some of the secrets I know as far as how to get things up there. I'll talk about some of them in this video. You can download this video completely free if you've never uploaded to Pond5 or any music library before. I know a lot of you are new to this channel every day, so I want to make sure that if you've never uploaded to Pond5, or maybe if you have and would just like to see somebody else go through it and make sure you're doing it the right way, you can look at this free course. You can find it right here at makemusicincome.com slash Pond5. All you have to do is go in there and click on that link, go to that page, fill out your email, send that in. You'll be on our email list and you want to be on the email list to know about the new course that I have coming out very, very soon. So make sure you go down there and get your free Pond5 video at makemusicincome.com slash Pond5. On with the show. I've done some insider digging, as I want to do, with Pond5 this week. This is a video I've been planning to make for a while. And the first thing I want to do is talk about why I think it's super important for you to start with Pond5 when you are getting going with your music licensing. Especially if this is music that's going to go into other non-exclusive stock music libraries. Pond5 was the first library I got into when I first started stock music. And likely, if you have just started it or when you started it, Pond5 was where you got started. I always start every library and did with Pond5 as well with my highest produced stuff and my best produced stuff and now have over 200 files in Pond5. Also, I've never really been rejected from Pond5 for a song, so that's a good thing and another reason why I have 200 files up there. Now, some of those files are different versions of the same song as we do different alts and things like that of different songs, especially a loop version or different cuts of the song. So is Pond5 easy to get into? Well, that likely depends on your quality 
I have heard of people, even Daniel from stockmusiclicensing.com talks about getting rejected by Pond5 in his stock music licensing journey. If you've been rejected by Pond5, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know if people are still finding that's uh, something that happens to them a lot as they try to get started with Pond5. What I found was that in working with multiple stock music and non-exclusive music libraries, that Pond5 was a great place to start for a few reasons. First, likely my music would be accepted there. But second, and more importantly, it gives each song a place to live in Pond5's system, which conveniently stores all the information I need to put my non-exclusive material onto other libraries. Now, whether my next library is Motion Array or Audio Jungle or Gemendo or Song Trader or whatever it is, even if I'm pitching to a brief and need to go grab my song description or tags or something like that, I can go find that info in Pond5 and then grab it, copy it, and paste it into where I need to go to. One of the very first things you have to do with Pond5 is put in a description, uh, two or three sentences that talk about how the song goes and what the song could be used for. Pond5 automatically detects the BPM and the running time of each audio file that you put into it. So that information is always there. I can always go and select that information and copy and paste that right into another library that I'm putting stuff up to. Every library also needs tags and keywords. And I think this is really where Pond5 shines because it basically has a keyword generator in addition to the ones that you think up first. So you're always going to put in your first few keywords or your first few tags into Pond5 because you know what they are. It's the style. It's the different little instruments or things maybe that are unique to it. But then Pond5 basically gives you a keyword generator that lets you create a whole bunch more keywords that may help your song get heard in Pond5 or or some other library. You just pick from this big nice list here and as you select a tag, it gets added to your keywords. Voila. There's also an instrument section to choose instruments in the song and those get added to your tags as well and a section for adding a time period if that is something that is applicable for your song. So I think all these things make Pond5 the first stock library you should put everything into. As I finish each song, the first place I go is Pond5 and then I go to Motion Array and Audio Jungle and, and the others armed with the information that I've already put into Pond5. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Before I even start the next library, most of the job of what I have to put in those other libraries is done. Now let's talk about the template. I think this is one of the great features that I talk about in my video that I told you about that's free to download and it's called the template feature. So do you have four or five or 10 or more versions of your song to put on Pond5? Well, this is the easy way to do it. Instead of going through and remembering all that you put in each time, just use the template feature and fill out the information one time. Save the template and then just apply it to each file. It's super easy and a real time saver. I have just a small rant and I promise this will likely be the only rant in this video. Please only put a reasonable number of versions up to these libraries. Pond5 allows you to put each version of song that you have up there without having to put it into one file or even grouping it together. It allows you to just throw as many songs as you want up there. If you put 20 or 30 versions of the same song, it's only going to make the creator's job looking for music, having to swim through thousands of songs to find anything, a loop, maybe a 60, a 30, and a 15, or some kind of instrumental that's, that's needed if it's a vocal song. But you don't need to do every single kind of version and then every single kind of alt and every single kind of loop. I know it feels like that you need to get all the songs you can into a library, but just because you can dump a lot of songs into a library and a lot of different versions of the same song up there doesn't mean you need to. Now, I appreciate that Pond5 lets us put all the songs up as separate files. We don't get to do that in many libraries. And Pond5 does offer the template feature, but I wish one thing that Pond5 would do would be to organize all the alt mixes with the main song, or at least have the option to see all the alt mixes if you find the main song. I think that's a more organized way of doing it. I see this happening at Audio Sparks, where they let you group songs together. The music case, motion elements, and a few others 
they let you group files together to make it easier for creators to find the version they need once they find the song they like. I wish Pond5 would offer this as well. They do offer a feature that lets you make collections, but this might be cumbersome to organize the files this way. Yes, Pond5? Understood. Okay, now it's time for some Pond5 Intel. I asked Pond5 last week a few questions that people have asked me before, and they gave me some pretty good answers and probably what you would expect in some cases. One issue I put to them was that many authors feel lost with their songs in such a huge catalog. Or as my friend Dave Croft said, it's like being a needle in a stack of needles. I got a response from Aya at Pond5 who said, we understand that buyer's behavior is often unpredictable and artist success often depends on the niche, but the marketplace is definitely open for new music. She went on to say, we recommend putting more attention to the keywords and file descriptions because our search engine will use them to integrate the file to the related search branch. Understandably, this part of being a media seller is boring and uncreative, and sometimes great media cannot find its way to the buyer because of a poor description. By the way, I do find that some composers do put only a short line for the description and just a few tags. Pond5 allows you 50 tags and your description, I don't know what the limit is, but if you're starting with Pond5 like I recommend, you're gonna wanna write a nice two to three sentence paragraph about your song in the description. What the song is and the instruments it uses and then what the song would be good for at the very least. And that should be probably about two two lines or two full sentences. Also, as they say, it's good to write in a niche. Sometimes when I look at a library, trying to figure out what to put in it, and this goes for stock or sync libraries, I look at the different genres they have to see which might have less in it. Which genre has the least amount of files that people would have to search for? And if I do one of those genres, that's one I want to concentrate on. Another thing that people talk about a lot and ask me questions about, and that is, does Pond5 have robots doing their curating? How in the world can they curate that many files? Files do seem to kind of get through easily. Aya says they are indeed humans. The sheer load of content we get is overwhelming, and it is growing, but our curators remain human. Smiley face. Just what a robot would say. I have to say that in all my dealings with them and all my questions to them, I get very human responses from Pond5, and they are very responsive to questions, as is the case with these answers. So let's talk about Pond5 Publishing. Now, if you don't know what this is, you can work with Pond5 and they will be the publisher for your songs. Now, you might say, why would I ever want to do this? Well, here is the answer from their website. Since Pond5 doesn't share buyer-seller information, you're on your own when it comes to finding out where your Pond5 tracks wind up. This is something people ask me all the time. How do I know when things get on a YouTube site or get used by somebody once they are downloaded? The answer to that is content ID. In this case, they are talking about if something is used in TV or advertising, where there might be some back-end income through your PRO. The advantage of enrolling in Pond5 Publishing as a PRO affiliated writer is because we're the point of sale and have the ability to follow up with our customers to encourage them to fill out cue or jingle sheets for the use of Pond5 Publishing music in their broadcast productions. So is this something? Well, I'll let you know when I get my next BMI statement and I see on there something from Pond5 bringing in some royalties. And it's easy to know because they put each song into your PRO as the song title dash P5, and this is what it looks like in BMI. Now, this does make them more and make us less. Usually we have the writer and the publishing side if we keep all the publishing. But they still have a pretty valid point that if your music gets used in a television show, a higher license, and I've had a higher license be bought at Pond5 before, there is a better chance that we'd get at least our writer's side than if we weren't with Pond5 Publishing because they are trying to make sure those cue sheets get filled out because they are motivated because they are the publisher for those Pond5 songs. So there's really no reason not to do it because you're not gonna make any PRO income 
on just regular stock stuff that's put on YouTube or that is put into a corporate presentation or something. So you're not losing anything by doing it. And if something does get used in television, they're going to work harder from their end because they want to see back in income from that publishing and possibly more pennies, more nickels, more dollars. So I think there's no reason why you shouldn't do this. Okay. So at the beginning of this video, I talked about a new secret way to make income with Pond5. And you waited all this time to hear it, right? Or you just followed the link in my description, which, okay, anyway, cheater. So over the last few months, a rumor has been floating around that Pond5 had a subscription level that authors could opt into, you know, to make even less money from a download. Now, I'm partly kidding, as I am not a subscription model hater. I suspect that subscription sales on Pond5 won't be any worse than my single sales on there, which in 2021 were only about $13 of profit per month or a sale or two per month. Anyway, I opted in for this, and here's what Pond5 told me about what they call their membership. Regarding the membership, the information about the sales hasn't been integrated into the artist dashboard yet, as the membership for a long time was fully optional for the buyers and artists, and we tried to promote all in-cart purchase methods. As of now, artists can reach out to us and send us a link to their collections, which will be reviewed and added to the existing membership library. Once you've prepared this, make sure that it is marked public, send us the link, and then our content team will be happy to consider your work. Just FYI, I emailed them to put my entire library in instead of a collection. Remember, you need to email them directly at support at pond5.com. There is no other way to get into the membership at this time. I'd suggest putting together a collection of your strongest songs and then submitting that in a short email to them about getting into the membership level. Again, that email goes to support at pond5.com. Your title of the email should say membership option or getting into the membership level or something like that. Now, here's something to remember. You don't have to do this. For all of you watching who hate subscription libraries. Please don't comment with what a scam subscription libraries are and you can't believe that Pond5 is doing this and your precious songs, blah, blah, blah. Just don't do it and move along. Your songs will be safely tucked away with the millions of other songs in Pond5. No reason to perhaps bring in other income. Who wants to make music income? Eric, Eric Copeland. Copeland. Okay, well, I hope you have learned a few things about Pond5 today, maybe, that you didn't know before. Remember to download your free video on how to upload at Pond5 right below here in the link makemusicincome.com slash Pond5. You'll also find the link in the description below. Make sure to watch this video where I rant completely on stock music, way more than this video, and just continue to talk about the many changes that are happening all the time, including this subscription thing with Pond5 in the stock music marketplace. Changes every day. So watch this video and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.